Hey everybody, this is Pete, and in this video, I want to cover a topic that came up yesterday while I was on tech support. Somebody was having trouble controlling the visibility of components in the Build of Materials tool. And so I want to take some opportunity to discuss a specific BOM state called Phantom and how you can use this to your advantage. So I'm going to start out with an assembly. I didn't exactly copy what they did, but uh, here's the door, an access door. Used to build stuff like this in the past. And so it's a little door with some weather stripping in the back or gasketry. It's got a plate, and then to reinforce the plate, we've got some plates and we've got some fasteners. So there's a lot going on here in this little assembly. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that assembly and I'm going to place it into this top level assembly. So go ahead and grab that, place a copy of it place it grounded at the origin and boom. So we've now taken a sub assembly and we placed it in the assembly. So this is where the bill of material states come into play. So if I come up to the bill of materials, quick word on the bill of materials, there's three different tabs. This is also something that I clarified for a customer. The model data tab is basically just all the stuff that's involved in the model, right? The structured and the parts only tab are, are different views that you can look at in the bill of materials. So the way I look at these is structured is sort of like what the assembler sees at this level. So if you go ahead and enable this view, this is what they would get. <laughs> they would get the subassembly. Okay, that's a way to think of it, not the only way. And then the parts only view, the way I look at this is if we whoops, enable parts only view, is that this is what the purchasing people would see. So you can kind of look at the bill of materials in different ways. But what can happen is we also have an additional control over this called the BOM structure, the BOM status. So if we look at the model data, we can see that any one of these parts is set to normal or in the case of the fasteners is set to purchased. But let's say that we don't want to count the weather strip. So what I could do here is if I look at the BOM structure, I can set it to phantom. And if I set it to phantom, now it doesn't show up in the BOM. It almost acts like it's a reference. So you can use that. That's a little less common, although I have a video I'll link to in the description where I use the phantom part state to represent a complex assembly but I don't want to show all the parts. So there are times when you'll set the part to be phantom. But what's really common, and this is what threw off the customer, was you can actually set the subassembly to be phantom. So the way, the reason I would use this is if I wanted to take advantage of all the uh, performance gains you get when you build a subassembly, but I actually want to list all the parts at the structured level. So let's say they're actually going to build each one of these plates. So if I come in here and I set the subassembly to phantom, this produces an interesting result now when we look at structured. So instead of showing the subassembly, it now pushes all of those components to the top level assembly. So it acts as though they're being placed here at the top level assembly, not that they've been placed inside of a sub. So this is, again, is kind of useful when you're going to have somebody building an assembly on the shop floor, but from a CAD standpoint, we absolutely want to make sub-assemblies so that we don't have to model all of the different constraints, etc. And this becomes really effective if we have more than one. So if I copy this and I place that four different times, now I've got all of these sub-assemblies. I only have the number of constraints required for the one and then it's just whatever it takes to place the other copies. So this is a really efficient way to model in the CAD environment, but by setting this assembly to being phantom, it'll actually quantify the components at the top level assembly. So this is a little trick you can play with the phantom level, or sorry, phantom BOM state so that you can control that. And the last thing, another way you can control this BOM state is if you actually go back to the assembly itself, look at the Tools tab. In the Document Settings, you can also control the Bill of Material state here. So if I switch that back to Normal, I come back to this top-level assembly, 
now it'll switch back on the structure to just showing it. So you can control that here in the Bill of Materials tool at an upper level assembly or in the subassembly itself. If you go to the document settings, you can change the BOM state as well. So again, it's kind of a quirky thing, but there, there are some uses for the Phantom Bill of Materials structure. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know and have a blessed day.